Good morning, everyone. My name is Tiffany McDaniel. I am the Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County. At this time, I would like to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Swanee Jett. Dr. Swanee Jett was appointed by the State of Florida and Seminole County Board of County Commissioners as the Health Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Seminole County on April 4th, 2013. Before relocating to Florida, he was a health officer of Bullitt County Health Department in Kentucky. Dr. Jett is a national leader in public health as president of the National Association of County and City Health Officials, which is also known as NACHO. At this time, please join me in welcoming Dr. Swanee Jett. Well, good morning again. You know, today is a it is a special day just because of the simple fact that we're able to come together um, at this church gathering on September 11. But this should resonate nationwide of why this is important today. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the intent. We as public health professionals, healthcare, and as citizens, should work together with the hospitals and the health department. So I want to thank the Department of Health for allowing us to be able to collaborate on establishing that protocol. We are always focused on population health. So for me, focusing on population health, which is something I believe in wholeheartedly, is preventing one death. Okay. So if we can save one life, that's the point of public health. It is educating the broader community. We do this all the time, whether it be influenza, when a lot of people die, the plague, or Jon Snow, when a cholera outbreak happened in London. We also recently did it for Ebola. So there was more public health messaging in order to save lives. Clinicians on the ground, but the public messaging to educate and empower people to make decisions. And so, as I move forward today, for those of you that know public health, this would be something new, not new. But for everybody else, it might be sort of novice as to why we want to educate people, not just in Florida, because this amoeba it's not a Florida issue. First and foremost, it's, it's not to distract people from coming to Florida to swim in salt, salt water or any type of water. This is a world issue. And so educating the broader community is public health one-on-one. And that's what we should be invested in all the time. Anybody out there that's live, looking at it via live stream, you can text your questions in. And as the program moving along, we'll be able to answer some of those questions along the way. So I want to talk a little bit about the history of public health and why we were established. Most of it happened around marine hospital bases through seamen. Okay, so a lot of people really don't understand why public health was established, but it was to save lives and to reduce mortality in a community. This is the first influenza outbreak that occurred. So if anybody's seen the movie Contagion, that's, that's public health one-on-one. -on -one. CDC, Department of Health, working on ground with the media. And the media is important in terms of messaging. So, you know, we like to sensationalize things sometimes, but the point of the media is to educate the broader community, make citizens aware. So currently in public health, we're supposed to always monitor the health status, okay? But I love number three, inform, educate, empower. When we stop doing that in public health, we have lost a greater community. Number seven, link people to public health services. To me, that's critical. And then we're always constantly doing research. 
So now you see the research community, hospital sector, health departments, one. It's a public health system. We need everybody in this room in order for it to work effectively. So a little bit about amoeba, and I won't go in depth with it, but you can tell how it survives in warm water. Here are some of the symptoms. And so clinicians have already seen some of these symptoms before, whether they've been in Florida or Texas, et cetera. Here are the areas that you need to be cognitive of. And so, you, you know, when you think about should I go swim in some water or should I go swim in my pool, there are cases that I feel are underreported. And they are underreported because they have been misdiagnosed. So sometimes uh, a patient might come in, they might have viral meningitis or bacterial meningitis. What we need to do is take one step further and ask questions. Okay, where did you swim? Okay. So begin to track that back, just like we did with Ebola. What country did you go to? Give me your exact location. Because what we might find is that we are misdiagnosing cases. And when you misdiagnose a case, just like in any scenario, it could cost somebody their life. So we have to have better screening tools in order to catch it early. And that goes to say for somebody that might have diabetes or a clogged artery, it's the same factor. So some of the measurements we talked about reduce. So we really want to reduce, you know, fresh lakes, people swimming in that, or hot springs, or unchlorinated pools. Really in humid temperatures, okay? Now, if you do decide to swim, it's always suggested wear a nose clip or do not put your head under water, okay? These are the things that actually prevent amoeba. And I've talked a little bit about the recreational activity. So in the summertime, you know, there was a case in Indiana several years ago, one of the first cases I've heard of amoeba. There was a child that was drowning. And an adult, 21 years old, actually jumped in to save the person's life. The individual, the older individual died. The child survived. So that was the first time I was alerted. So it can happen to anyone, not just children. And for those of you that have children in the room, I, I want you to take this message to heart. It can happen to your children, okay? It can happen to you up until the age of 21, 22 years old. There are cases out there. So for the media, once we're done today, I would like your message to be focused on the families. Not as much as the research, not as much as interviewing myself, but to the families. Because it's no longer a number. You have a face with the person, with an event. So these are the cases that have happened thus far. And so as you can see, they're happening all across the nation. So rare, if the data is not correct, then maybe it's not as rare as we think. So public health messaging. This is where public health can step up. Okay, we often do interviews to convey our message. Okay, we do press releases. We do this all the time. Social media, Twitter, Facebook. We cannot avoid these things. Okay, but this is the best method to educate the broader community. All right. In Seminole County, we not only did that, but we did reverse 211. So all 65,000 parents and students received a message on their phone to protect them during the summer months. Okay, that was critical. We also went and talked to the school board. And the school board was very receptive. They said, anything you can do to protect our citizens and our youth, because we want them back the next school year. And then we also did a proclamation. Okay. 
to drive home a message April 27th. Exciting moment? Probably not. But it was to drive home the message in the greater community that this was important. And I appreciate the city of Sanford for having that proclamation for us. So before I conclude, do I have any questions? All right. No, I haven't known of any cases 40, 50 years old. Yes. There are several cases in Pakistan. There's been over nine this year, and one very specific city. Okay. There you have it. All right. Anybody else has any more questions? All right.